A reminder about the linear outcomes of this module, and we have covered the epidemiology of leptospirosis. The second part of the module covers the pathogenesis and clinical features of and the laboratory diagnosis for leptospirosis. You will also learn about the management of patients with leptospirosis. However, we will discuss the management further in the last part of this module, which focuses on the preventive measures. Pathogenesis of leptospirosis. The leptospires can penetrate abraded skin or intact mucous mucosa. They will then enter the circulation and disseminate to various tissues. The dissemination and proliferation of the bacteria in the tissues result in a broad spectrum of clinical manifestations. These include fever, headache, chills, myalgia, abdominal pain, and conjunctival suffusion. More severe manifestations include renal failure, jaundice, meningitis, hypotension, hemorrhage, and hemorrhagic pneumonitis. The pathogenesis of leptospirosis is not fully understood. It has been reported that there are two phases in the cause of the infection. First is the septicemic phase, where vascular injury is seen in various organs. And the second phase is the immune phase, which involves the host immune response. Immune complex deposition may contribute to endothelial injury. Incubation period is usually about 10 days, although it can reach from 2 to 26 days. As mentioned in the previous slide, patients present with broad spectrum of clinical features. 90% of patients may have febrile illness without jaundice, while 10% of them may be severely ill and have jaundice. Severe leptospirosis is usually associated with hepatic dysfunction, renal insufficiency, hemorrhage, myocarditis, and hemorrhage may occur as petechiae, purpura, conjunctival, gastrointestinal, and pulmonary hemorrhage. Severe form of leptospirosis is usually associated with a high mortality. The prognosis of leptospirosis depends on the severity of the disease and associated complications. Where leptospirosis is endemic, it should be a differential diagnosis when a patient presents with acute onset of fever, headache, and myalgia. Diagnosis may be difficult if dengue fever or malaria is also endemic in the region. This is because dengue and malaria have similar clinical manifestations with leptospirosis. Laboratory tests facilitates the diagnosis of leptospirosis. Leptospires can be detected by microscopy, antigen detection, and culture. Microscopic methods include examination of tissue samples by dark field, histological staining, and immunohistochemical staining methods. Dark field microscopic examination of blood, urine, CSF or dialysate fluid, however, is not sensitive nor specific. On the other hand, histological staining requires expertise for interpretation. And immunohistochemical histochemical staining methods can be used in postmortem tissues. Another method is isolation of leptospires, which are rarely performed. Culture requires special media and leptospires grow slowly. Therefore, it is not helpful in patient management. However, culture is valuable for serova identification of isolates by serologic or molecular methods. In this regard, several conventional polymerase chain reaction primer pairs have been described for amplification of, of, of leptospires. PCR, however, is not able to identify the infecting serova by sequencing the amplified product. Most of leptospirosis cases are diagnosed by serology, which will be elaborate, elaborated in the next slide. 
The reference standard assay is the Microscopic Agglutination Test or MAT. In Microscopic Agglutination Tests, live antigens that are of different zero groups of lactospires are reacted with serum samples and then examined for agglutination by dark field microscopy. This test needs significant expertise and resources to perform and is usually done in a few reference laboratories. A serologically confirmed case of leptospirosis is defined by a four-fold rise in MAT titer to one or more serovas between acute phase and convalescent sera. As far as for the management, antibiotics used to treat leptospirosis include doxycycline, penicillin and third-generation cephalosporins. Oral antibiotics are often sufficient in mild infection, whereas high dose of intravenous penicillin is required for patients with more severe symptoms. Monitoring and supportive care are also indicated in some cases. For example, dialysis for patients with impaired kidney function and as well as mechanical ventilation for some cases. Similar to part 1, you may proceed to the next part after completing task 2.